show them the spray bottle? Spray bottle. <laughs> I don't care for the black race. I think the white race is more educated, civilized, and sophisticated. I'm embarrassed to be black. I want the white race to embrace me and treat me as if I was white. Because I think and I act white. There have been a few questions regarding sisters going to work, confusion about their hairstyles, what to do, what not to do. Well, sisters, for the first part of the class, today's your day. Let's open up with Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 61. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Read it again. Also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So, as I said, I'm going to gear the class towards the sisters today. One of the plagues that sisters commonly get. They say eight out of ten black women, Latin and black women, catch, get fibroids. Fibroids. Abiel, can we get the little video clip about fibroids? You have benign fibroids, which are non-cancerous, then you have some that are cancerous. Intramural, found in the muscular layers of the uterine wall, and submucus, which can protrude into the uterine cavity. In addition, fibroids can be connected to the uterus through a stalk called pedunculated. About 55% of fibroids are subserosal, 40% are intramural, 5% are submucosal. Fibroids are rarely found outside the pelvic cavity. Symptoms from fibroids are related to their size and location. Although most women with fibroids have no symptoms, Many may have significant symptoms including pelvic and abdominal pressure or pain and excess bleeding. Approximately one-third of women with fibroids will have abnormal uterine bleeding, pain, or pressure in the lower abdomen. Women with fibroids pushing into the cavity of the uterus often have irregular bleeding and may have problems with fertility. Fibroids in the muscle or just beneath the outer surface of the uterus are more likely to cause pressure pain, and affect nearby organs such as the bladder or rectum. This image shows a uterus with a large fibroid. Sometimes fibroids can enlarge so much that they change the shape of the uterus. Let's discuss some of the common symptoms associated with fibroids. Abnormal uterine bleeding is the most common symptom associated with fibroids and is the main reason women seek treatment. Intramural and submucosal fibroids can distort or enlarge the uterine cavity. Pressure from submucosal fibroids on the endometrium can cause excessive bleeding. Because abnormal uterine bleeding can result from other causes, such as endometrial cancer and hormonal problems, it is important that women with fibroids who have abnormal vaginal bleeding receive a thorough evaluation for other causes of bleeding. Pain is a common symptom of fibroids. Women with fibroids may have painful menstrual cramps. A rapidly enlarging fibroid may outgrow its blood supply and degenerate, causing pain and cramping. Pedunculated fibroids, which are attached to the uterus by a thin stalk, may twist and cause severe pain. Large uterine fibroids, or those which push on the bowel, the vagina, or pelvic wall, may also make bowel movements, sexual intercourse, or certain movements painful. Okay, so now, we're discussing fibroids. Now. What I want to do, I'm gonna, I want y'all to write that down. Fibroids, comma, we're going to hit on in a few seconds. 
give me the next video called alopecia. This is another thing that sisters get. Give me back to Deuteronomy 28 and 61. 61 again. Deuteronomy 28 verse 61. Right there. Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So now we're going to deal with another plague. It's called alopecia. Alopecia is when a woman's hair is falling out. Uh, they get uh, large bald spots. Here today at Three Girls on a Needle, and we showed you some before pictures of this client. And um, she's gotten a lace closure, as you can see. Very natural looking. Looks like a real hair. Around the edges, how it was placed on. I'm going to show it to you all the way around so that you get to see how natural looking it is. Very flat. She hasn't been styled yet, but we just wanted to show you. So she, this woman, this sister suffers from alopecia. She went to this salon and they created a, uh, a wig sewn into a net attached to her head to give the uh, appearance that her hair is longer intact. They use raw virgin hair. Now, I want to go to Isaiah the third chapter. Isaiah the third chapter. I need all you sisters to pay attention. The book of Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 16. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty. Let's pause there. Abiel, can we look up the word haughty? Haughty. Synonyms. Proud. Arrogant. Vain. Conceited. Snobbish. Superior. Uh, Self-important. Pompous. Let me get some easy words. Scornful. Uh, disdainful. Oh, there's an easy word at the end. Stuck up. Big-headed. Snooty. I don't know what hoity-toity means, but... <laughs> Back to you, Captain Isaac. Isaiah 3, verse 16. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes. Let's look at wanton, because that's not a, that's not a gen, general Negro word. Wanton. What does that mean? Oh, cruel or violent action. Deliberate, unprovoked, uh, willful, malicious, spiteful, wicked, cruel, promiscuous, immoral, immodest, indecent, senseless, pointless. Wait, I want to get to number two. Especially of women, it says sexually immodest or promiscuous. Right, like on Facebook. Now, some of you sisters, I, I, t I, I had to cancel Facebook. I can't stand that thing. We get so much evil on it. Some of you young sisters in here running around with boyfriends in a secret, you are on a path of being a whore. If you are under 20 years old, let me say this, let me say it like this, the ones we know. If you are even under 18, 17 with boyfriends, you are a whore. I'm going to tell you, sister, straight. Don't say you didn't hear it because you heard it. You can sneak around here and sue shalom. You are a whore, and your mother is not raising you right. None of you young girls should be in here with boyfriends. You will not find boyfriends in the Bible. Then the boy you find is a Negro in the world who hates the Most High. You go on the boy's page, he got three other girls, and here she is. Shalom. She's girlfriend number three. You're stupid, and your mama ain't raising you right. I'm going to tell you straight. You'll be pregnant soon, then you look for a brother in here to take care of your damn baby. And that ain't happening. That's it, because that's what's going to happen. Watch. Bear, what, listen, mark these words. They go out, get a Negro in the world, get pregnant, come in here and look for somebody to take care of their kid. This is what they do. And I'm talking about the sisters who have learned the truth. Not those that don't know. I'm not talking about them. Because you sisters may come in, never hearing this truth, single parent. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the ones in here learning, then go, you know what? I'm going to go have sex with some boy out there in the world because he's cute. He got curly hair and hazel eyes. Okay. So now back to Isaiah 3. And we know who you are, sister. Don't, don't think you're hiding. You're not hiding. Isaiah 3, in verse 16. Isaiah 3, verse 16. Moreover the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, 
and walk with stretched forth necks in everybody's business. Go ahead. And wanton eyes, lustful eyes, arrogant, vain. Go ahead. Walking and mincing as they go. Walking and mincing as they go. Clickety clack with them heels. Talky talk talk. Go ahead. And making a tinkling with their feet. Right, because back in ancient days they used to have the uh, ankle bracelets with the bells on it. But today you wear them heels. <coughs> Go ahead. Therefore the Lord <coughs> will smite with a scab the crown of the head. Right. Now this is a plague. This is a plague. Isaiah 3 is really going to women with black women, the southern kingdom first and foremost, having very, very short, unproductive hair. Uh, this is a plague called alopecia. Read that again, Captain Isaac. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. Their secret parts goes down below their skirts, their butt, buttocks, their breasts, their vagina. That's what he's talking about. Read on. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon. Now, these are going into how they dress. The round tires like the moon, they had them big earrings, and they used to tire their, um, their hair up. Go ahead. The chains and the bracelets. Their jewelries, go ahead. And the mufflers, uh -huh. the bonnets, and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, and the tablets, and the earrings, the rings, and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles. That's their cape with the hoods, go ahead. And the wimples. Go ahead. And the crisping pins. Come on. The glasses, and the fine linen, and the hoods, and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. Instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. Now, I'm going to leave that one alone. I know if I say something, y'all going to laugh. Go to the next part. Go ahead. And instead of a girdle, a rent. That's going into their shape. And instead of well-set hair. This is what I wanted to get to. And instead of well-set hair. Boldness. There shall be boldness. That's what the Most High's judgment was on the daughters of Zion. First and foremost, the southern kingdom, okay, falling upon them. Now, some of the other tribes are hit right with that too. Okay, do me a favor. Go to get me Chris Rock's video. Chris Rock did a video called Good Hair. What's your definition of good hair? Some that looks relaxed and nice. If your hair is relaxed, white people are relaxed. Your hair is nappy, they're not happy. Oh, God. This October, Chris Rock will take you back to your roots. Just yesterday, my daughter came into the house and said, Daddy, how come I don't have good hair? I wonder how she came up with that idea. Within the black community, if you have good hair, you're prettier or better than. The lighter, the brighter, the better. They want to go like this, like Farrah Fawcett. There's so many pressures to straighten your hair. Look at my ring, still there. <laughs> Relax is the chemical that will take a black woman's hair from this and change it into this. It's kind of like a torture session. Could you tell us how dangerous relaxer is? Sodium hydroxide will burn through your skin. So that can's got a good perm. This whole side was yes. burnt off. And that's how the asymmetrical look came in with salt and pepper. So you saying your hair is addicted to relaxers? I am on the creamy crack. Creamy crack. So what's in your hair now? This is a weave. This is a weave. Two pieces here. You know, like extensions. Like like that. The black hair business is a nine billion dollar business. One of these can run you five thousand dollars. Well, I have a layaway plan. So you can lay away the wig. That's wave. right. Have you ever put your hair through a black woman's hair? Hell no, not a black woman. You just don't touch it. Do not touch my wig. No. Does your wife let you touch her hair? The question is, do I let her touch mine? Weave sex is a little awkward. What do you do? I guess stay on top. This is a 7,000 pound batch of relax. This will last Prince about a month. Get ready to go around the world. Right now, I have Indian hair. Human hair is India's biggest export. We need 10 inch to 40. 10 inches and better. Yes. It's like porno. Tell me. In the award winning new comedy that Vanity Fair calls hilarious. Has anybody ever tried to steal your hair? No. <laughs> if you see some black women, just run the other way. What I really wanted to know, if I could make any money selling black hair. Black hair! Would you like to buy some black hair? They don't want to know that you don't ever cut like this. You make sure the hair's straight, look more natural. So my nappy hair is not worth anything. Yeah.
good hair. My advice for men when they're making love to a woman who has a wig is keep your hands on the top. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, all righty then. Now that, that continues on with the class. Now I want the next video. I want all you sisters to pay attention, brothers too. Get me the East Indian hair video. Right here. Notice the title. Your human hair was sacrificed to idols. In this temple in southern India, thousands of devotees are preparing to make a rather unusual offering. Some of them have waited years for this moment, growing their hair before giving it to the gods. It is a sacred ritual for millions of Hindus. My daughter was really sick. I vowed to donate my hair if she recovered. Do you know what will happen to your hair? No, I do not know, but it will be offered to the gods, and that's all that matters to me. Every Saturday, thousands of pilgrims come to the Dwarka Tirumala temple to be shaved by one of the 95 barbers that work here. The pilgrims leave behind kilos of hair. The temple has turned the pilgrims' offerings into an incredibly lucrative business. Once cut, the hair is collected and then stored by the temple. It is then exported around the world to be used in wigs and hair extensions. I don't know exactly what happens to the hair. The leaders of the temple take it and they sell it. For how much? Well, I know the temple makes about a million dollars per year. After it's collected at the temple, the hair is then transported to Ravindra Vanka's factory. Mix the hair okay, color is okay. and separate the dark strands. Every year, hundreds of tons of hair from several temples is treated here by the factory 3,000 workers. The hair is washed, dried and then sorted. The factory stocks hair of every kind, color and form. For Ravindra Vanka, his products are a source of pride. You see? My God! He's unbelievable. Yeah. How many inches is this? Yeah, it's 46. 46? Yeah. Wow! <laughs> I can't believe it. I've been working in this business for seven years, but this is the first time I've touched hair this long, more than a meter long. The price is $100 to $700 per kilo. It's depend upon the length and what kind of the process. Bleaching, dyeing, blonde color. The blonde color more expensive. The factory attracts buyers from around the world and a growing number of clients are from China. Every year um, almost a 10% increase. Why is so much increase? Well, because more and more ladies, they want to look younger, they want to look beautiful, so they, they need our products. <laughs> they love our products. <laughs> the Chinese alone buy nearly a thousand tons of hair from this factory. A business that just keeps on growing, much like the hair that sustains it. Okay. Now, everybody saw, everybody saw what we saw, right? We all saw the same thing. Look up Hindu gods. Yeah, so what are you going to say? What, he said that the women want to look beautiful and all that. Yeah. What he was really, he was really cursing us out. That's what he was really saying. But the deal is, is that he had to, he, he spoke those nice words because he had spoken to his PR person. Because he got to be political, he got to be correct with what he say. He can't say something. That's going to mess up the sales. So he had to say all the rights. The woman want to look beautiful and all that. Right. No, he know his number one client is the black woman. But he ain't going to say that. But he know that's where the money's going. He knows where the hair's going. Okay, list of Hindu deities. Remember they said they offer the hair to their gods. India, in the Hindu religion, because they were Hindus that we just observed, Hinduism is the dominant religion of the Indian subcontinent. It comprises three major traditions. Shaivism, excuse me if I'm mispronouncing it, uh, Vaishnavism, and Shakitism, whatever, whose followers considered Shiva, Vishnu, and Shakti, also called as Devi, to be called the supreme deity, respectively. Okay, now let's look at some photos of them. These are the images of their gods. Some of them have eight arms, six arms. So sisters who are wearing... Some, listen to my wording, some of these hairs have been offered to strange gods. This is why the Most High is plaguing, one reason why we're, the Most High is plaguing our sisters. Brothers, so you want a woman with a hair weave? All right. Some of their hair has been sacrificed to gods, to devils. Give me that. Give me that one in Deuteronomy um, 32, 17 first. Give me that one. 
Because brothers, the reason, one reason, listen, one reason why sisters wear these hair weaves, because you brothers are sick in your mind and want them to wear that. Now you know why it is being plagued. Read that, Captain. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 17. They sacrificed unto devils. They sacrificed unto devils. Go ahead. Not to God. Not to the Most High. Read. To gods whom they knew not. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods. To new gods. That came newly up. That came newly up. Go to Colossians 2.21 now. Come on. The book of Colossians 2 verse 21. Touch not. Touch not the unclean thing. Taste not. And don't taste unclean things. Handle not. Don't handle these unclean things. Go ahead. Which all are to perish with the using. When we start dabbling into these un their holidays, their, their customs, the most I said, we're going to perish. We will perish because of that. Now, watch this. Give me the next video, Abby. I got to give two thumbs up for brother Tommy Sotomayor. He brought out a good point about this. He said... You had three shots to explain the black Jews. He said, not in one of, none of your three documentaries did you ever deal with the black Jews. He said, something's odd about that. Something's very strange. So now, I have not changed the topic. We're still on point. Pay attention. 98% of fibroids in America Black women, the next highest group, Jewish women, what they got in common? Nappy hair. How come my mother never heard of fibroids? How come they didn't get fibroids? You can't catch it, it ain't a disease. How are we getting it? Perms. When we start using perms, those chemicals go through my skull. And that's how I get fibroids. Now, fortunately, there is a trend out there where black the sisters are coming back naturally a little bit. Now, part of that was voluntary, and the other part is that those perms have burned up and messed their hair up a lot. They're having to go natural now. And the other thing is that wearing those tight braids on the side of their head has pulled out spots around their hair. Some of them, the hairline starting back there, you know, because of the braids being so tight. We're not in the African sun. It's not creating the same type of oils on our scalp as here in the hills of North America, where you have four different seasons and terrible weather. And so that hasn't worked on our hair, even though, you know, uh, and some of that hair is made from raccoons, horses, hyenas. It's made from anything, and they put it together, ship it over here, and sell it to us. I was Pause getting right a doll for one of my daughters. Now, earlier I told y'all, I said, listen to the, they said they grew their hair for years to do it. Now, once all that hair runs out, where do you think China getting that hair from? You think the Chinese just love you? No, them Chinese don't love you. They're all about the almighty dollar. They getting that hair, raccoons, hyenas, and horses. And they're selling it here to the black woman who thinks it's human hair. And she sits here with the raccoon on her head or the hyena just, just wave, waving his stuff. And she's getting jacked up all in the head. I'm telling y'all, listen good. Y'all think that this society is, loves you. This society don't love you. They want to reap the, the, the financial money from you. That's it. That's all they want. Sell a black woman hyena hair. <laughs> she thinks she's sexy. So, sisters, get me Proverbs 3 and 31. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. The Bible says to us, envy not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. A lot of sisters wear this stuff. One reason, because brothers, which are sick minds, you want the sister to look as close to the white woman as she can be. You want that, that white girl flow. When, the mo when Christ returns on the scene, the standard of beauty is going to change overnight. They said that the blonde hair costs the most. Yes, and they dyed that hair blonde. Because the, the, the East Indian women don't have blonde hair. No. They dyed it blonde and sell it all to the Chinese for more money. And Chris Rock said his hair ain't worth nothing. Mm -hmm. So black people's, black women's hair ain't worth nothing, and the blonde, blonde, the white woman's hair is worth everything. Hey. That's what they, they said in the video. Yes, y'all saw. They blonde hyena hair. They blonde <laughs> raccoon hair, too. <laughs> right. And the price goes three times higher when they put their blonde paint in their hair. Exactly. Give me, uh, give me that. Uh, Leviticus 1330. About sisters with blonde hair. Then the priest shall see the plague. 
And behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. So his yellow hair is unclean hair. The East Indians said when they yell, when they blonde their hair, it's worth more money. Black women die, they, they, they come with the dread look saying, oh, I'm natural, but then they blonde that. The Bible says that is a plague of leprosy. Now, Naomi Campbell, Benjamin, one of the most beautiful women in the world. Look what happened to her because of the years of use of perms. Look what happened to her hair. That's what Zada Lee was saying. The hair now is back here because the perms and the pulling is so tight. And when they get to your extensions, it's raccoon and hyena hair. A lot of them are tying into their hair. And this is the result of it. That is, that was one of the most beautiful women in the world. Super runway model. That's her, very, very good looking. But because of the years of abuse with the perms, those the raccoon and hyena tied in her hair, now let's go to today. Go back to today now. Wow. Yes, yeah, she was haughty. Yes, this is her. Mm. Do y'all see that? All for being vain. The women are in shock. I'm looking over there. The women should be in shock. They are in shock. And wait, wait. The brothers should be in shock because some of y'all forced them to go out and do that to themselves. You wait five years from now, ten years from now, watch what happened. Now, bro brother, she ain't right. Right. Why ain't she right now? Oh, because the looks have changed and the hair back here now. She look like George Jefferson now. That's cause of y'all. That's cause of y'all. Because why? Our minds are sick. We don't like the way they look because we've been brainwashed in American society. Babylon the Great today. Give me Daniel 7 and 9. The book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 9. Y'all listen good. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. So Daniel saw in a vision where all the thrones, meaning the kingdoms upon the earth, America, China, Japan, Russia, Afghanistan, Europe, France. Read. And the Ancient of Days did sit. He saw in his vision the Ancient of Days. Why is he the Ancient of Days? Because he have no beginning of days, nor end of days. He's older than days. Go ahead. Whose garment was white as snow. And he had on a garment, a white garment. So if he has a garment on, he has a what? A body. Read. And the hair of his head. Here we go. Like the pure wool. Like the pure wool. It didn't say he had a perm. It said the pure wool. We have been so brainwashed, we despise the pure wool look. We see pure wool and we say, well, how do you say it in Spanish? Pelo malo, meaning bad hair. Pelo crespo. Oh, you got bad hair. Well, guess what? God got pure wool hair. The mo and I, who going to tell the most high your hair's nasty? You need to look like the devil white man. Oh, really? He'll blast you to hell and back. And you need to. You need to be blasted to hell and back. Now, that's the most high. Let's get his, his son in Revelation 1.14. The pure wool. And it didn't say kinky or nappy. These are terms we use to still put a negative twist on our hair. The Bible uses the proper word, wool, wool. But no, the white man says, no, don't say that. Say nappy. That's why the videos we saw, that's why they use those, that vernacular. Nappy, kinky. The Bible don't use those words. We had to use what the Bible says, wool. You got it, Captain? Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. His head and his hairs, meaning the hair on his head and the hair on his face was white, meaning pure white like what? Like wool. Like wool. That's why I said when Christ returned, the standard of beauty will change. None of, nobody going to be running around talking about, I want a perm. Let the Lord hear you say that. You're going to get destroyed. You want to what? You want to put lye in your hair? Lie that will burn through iron. Give me that with uh, Malcolm X conk. Because men be doing the same thing. That your girlfriend's address or something no, like that? No, my granddaughter gave me that number in my dreams. Straight. 
three, eight. You told four. me Sassy Frassy gave you the nah, number. Nah, that woman quit me. After I hit the number, that woman was no good to me at no. all. No, what happened? She said I was cheap because I wouldn't cop her a diamond ring. And on top of that, had the indignation Ooh. to call me of all people. Good time, Charlie. Black son of a bitch. Sassy, frassy. Charlie, where's homeboy? Hey, Leno. Yeah? Your man out here waiting on you. Yeah, he is. Hey, fix to get that first car blade on, eh, homeboy? He hot like hell. <laughs> Don't be scared, son. You ain't got nothing to worry about. You in the hands of an expert. My hair was just like yours. Look what he did for me. <laughs> Don't scare the man no more than he's scared already. Get his forehead and eyebrows short now. Who's doing that? Y'all heard that. Y'all heard that. <laughs> oh, my cold tail, the stars sustain me because this shit could burn a hole through some neck. Hold tight, baby, and keep your eyes shut. I thought shut. you said this was gonna sting, shorty. Yeah. <laughs> this ain't nothing. Feel good, don't it? Yeah, real good, don't it? Yeah, it's all right. You gonna feel better than that in a minute. It is. You never look at that, shorty. Shorty, it's time to heat up there a little bit. It's all right. He's getting better and better, isn't it? <laughs> Just hold on. Uh, I'm holding, but it's heating. You gotta make it straight. Well, all right. That's what he told me, too. <laughs> Shorty, I got to get this out now. It's starting. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm holding. I'm holding on. Charlie, give me a hand. Help me out, Charlie. Hold him. Hold him. Hold him. Hold him. Hold him. I got to get up. I got to get up. Put some water on it. More water. Hey, wait, wait, you're getting in my eye now. How's it feel? I feel like I ain't got no skin on my head. If you can talk, it's out of here. Can't tell you. It's straight though, right? I ain't doing this again. Yeah, let me try. Let me try. <laughs> I can tell. It's laying down. Don't take it off yet. All right. That's the thing to do. Come on in here and get the a money maker and a heartbreaker every step of the way. You're gonna flip. That's right. Watch your lip there. Cause you may All right. Here we Looks white, don't it? All right. Yes. Yes. With all yes. root. Yes. With all yes. root. Yes. Yeah, man. So, so my elder Netanyahu, and I converted. We have to change the way we think. Right. The way we thought. Now, we have never forced the sisters to do anything about the hair. We ain't force them, but because we understand the scripture says love your neighbor as you love who? Yourself. We understand sisters don't love themselves. A lot of it's men's fault, but some of it is their own fault too, because they got that self-hate. But we need the sisters to start to look at themselves, love themselves, and you brothers got to start to love the sisters too, the way they look. Okay? No that way things things will change. Being born again will take on a new level of understanding. Yeah. Yeah, that goes back to image. That goes back to us setting our own image. That means we have to break away from the images that are already out here. You got to break away from that. We have to set our own. We basically have to rebuild the nation of Israel. Have to set up new standards and all that. You cannot get your standards from Vogue magazine, Essence. Cosmopolitan, Essence, all that BS garbage. You, can't, you cannot get your ideas from that because all of those Negroes are following white folks. So you're talking about you getting your black beauty, and they, and they got their head up the white man's behind. Mm -hmm. you ain't gonna get, you're not going to set up no images by following them. You got to get your imagery from the Bible. Yeah, you know, today, today our people call it fashion. That's another part, uh, thou shalt not envy your oppressor. They call it fashion to do what they do. Can we get the scripture in Corinthians 7.39? Get the scripture, 1 Corinthians 7.39 about fashion. Since Deacon um, uh, 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 Laba said fashion. Come on. First Corinthians 7, verse 31. And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. Y'all sisters see that? The fashion of this world passes away. The fashion, when, as we start to become born again, that affects not just the way we eat, the way we dress, it affects the way we look, the way we think. Everything changes. Everything the whole fashion of this world shall change. Everything. That, and all your excuses are going to be done away with too. That's why I said when Christ returns, 
the standard of beauty will change in a moment. Matthew 5 and verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Read it again. Ye are the light of the world. You, meaning we, the ones of us that, that's got the program on setting up the nation of Israel through the, through the Bible and its laws and customs and directives. That's what we're supposed to take what's in this Bible and, and harness it and be like the city on the top of the hill. Now, when it said city, what's, what's, what's involved in a city? Everything. You need all kinds of aspects to set up a city, which includes image. That's the reason why I'm saying that. Not only do we teach our people the laws, we teach them how to dress, we teach them how to walk, we teach them everything. Because in a city, it's involved with so many different, there's so many different things that come together that make up a city. So we are the city that's supposed to sit and be the light to our people that are still in darkness. So not only do we show them the commandments, we show them what the commandments bring us. It brings us a healthy mind so that we can promote a good feeling about ourselves with our imagery. You know. So all of those things are involved in a city. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah you know what's wrong with us? Really what's wrong with us is responsibility, man. The responsibility that we're not taking. As being repentant, we are afraid of our responsibility. The, uh, Deacon Yao Sab just bring the scripture. The scripture is to bring us back. You know, we was once dead. Now we bring the beauty back to life. When we cannot discern what is a woman in the world look like and what is an Israelite woman look like, something wrong with their sister. If their sister cannot discern both two, from mile away, this is an Israelite sister, this is a worldly sister, something wrong with their sisters. When these sisters coming from these doors from the world, when they come up in here, they expect to, they expect to see the light we say we are. But they cannot discern what is the world, what is the good sisters is in here. Something wrong with their, with their spirit, man. We are afraid to take our responsibility because we've been brainwashed, low self-esteem. Then we've been all type of wicked things these men put upon us. We have to turn to repent, sister. If you cannot see yourself, the difference between you, when I look at the TV, I said, this is a worldly woman, this is an Israelite woman, something wrong with your spirit. You have not been converted yet. Yeah, you can wear fringes and a bottom of blue, but your actions show that you have not been converted. Our sisters are so damaged when it comes to this image thing. Sometimes you can be, you can make a compliment to a sister that's dressed according to the Bible. And they'll denounce that and say, well, I, I did it kind of halfway. They don't, they don't really relish the compliment that you're giving them for actually following the laws of the Most High. Why? Because they still have a part of their mentality still out there saying, well, this doesn't look like what I saw in the magazine. It's a lot of work that's got to be done to the, to the sisters. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Do y'all really understand what I'm saying? You got to re really make them see that dressing and, and being in accord to this Bible is in fashion. Because they don't understand. They turn on the damn television and go right back to sleep. Sisters are doing the same thing. It's a trend. And now you get the young girls, their permanent girls' hair, uh, hot combing, and the ends. You see the hairs are uneven, broken. Mama is sick in her head. She's making a sick daughter. Hey, let me perm the hair. Let me uh, hot comb your hair. Hair jacked up. Just messing her hair up. Because they don't, they don't take pride in the way they look. Give me the scripture with Judith about how she looked. Give me that. We got to pattern ourselves after our forefathers. Sisters got to pattern themselves after their foremothers. And you brothers must assist them. Because if you brothers got a negative outlook on it, they're going to have a negative outlook on the way they look. Judith 10, verse 3 to 4. The book of Judith, chapter 10 and verse 3. And pulled off the sackcloth which she had on, and put off the garments of her widowhood, and washed her body all over with water. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, wait, wait. We ran past washed her body. Some use, now we read in Isaiah 3. I didn't touch on it. It said uh, about stink. I didn't touch on it because I don't want to hurt no feelings in there. But you walk by some and it's a whiff. You know that whoof. What the hell was that? I ain't going to point, I ain't going to point no sister out. You know who you are. Read that again, Captain. And pulled off the sackcloth which she had on, and put off the garments of her widowhood, and washed her body all over with water, 
and anointed herself with precious ointment. There's nothing wrong with using oils, precious ointment, sisters. Some sisters think it's, it's, it's uh, like a curse to put oils on their body. Put, pour the oils in your bath water and just soak. Let the oils just saturate in your skin. Your man like that. Men like that. Men like a good smelling woman. She ain't even got to be the best looking woman. She smelled good. I like that. Read on. And braided the hair of her head. And braided the hair of her head. So our foremothers took care of their hair. She didn't have blonde hair. And she didn't put raccoon hyena hair in her hair. She braided her hair of her head. Go ahead. And put on a tie upon it. And wrapped her hair up. That's and, the tie I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And put on her garments of gladness. Mm, she had clothes for gladness. This gonna make my, this. She had clothes of gladness that she used for her man. Go ahead. Wherewith she was clad during the life of Manassas, her husband. And she took. So she had clothes that she knew her husband liked. I like you, baby. I like that. Yeah, yeah. That's the outfit right there. The chain, remember we read about the changeable suits of apparel? He said, I like that apparel you got right there. So she knew what he liked. She knew what he didn't like. Go ahead. And she took sand. Here go the women today. Why you got that on? Because I like it. Well, listen, I don't like it. Where would I like? How about that? That's what our foremamas did. Well, I don't like that. And, 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 and something wrong upstairs. But, but that's the way she'll answer you. Exactly. But when she go to work, it'll be just like, what's her name, Sterling? Well, if you don't want to put on what I want to put, what I want you to put on, I'll just get somebody who will. Remember that? Yeah. The basketball thing. Right. He said, if you ain't going to do what I want you to do, I'll get somebody else. Exactly. Why, you could, these, some of these sisters go to work, the white man would say, don't wear that. Wear this. And she will do exactly what he says. She will wear, right, she'll wear a chicken suit if that white man said wear a chicken suit to work. Clock, 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 clock. She's going to work. We ain't kidding. We're telling the truth. But now when a husband say, can you wear this outfit? You're going to hear this teeth suck. Hey. Hey, you don't understand. <laughs> you know how Benjamin do. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> the hell is this? <laughs> Where we at, Isaac? Um, verse four. Uh -huh. And she took sandals upon her feet, and put about her her bracelets and so, her chains. So notice she has sandals, and you know her toes look good. Her toes didn't look like crow's feet. Yeah, see, sisters with the toes. Would well, you know why the toes are jacked? I'm sorry, sisters. They their foot is a size. 10 in men's size, but they'll squeeze it into a size six women's size. Uh, and they, they be in pain walking down the street. Click, 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 going to work in pain. Years later, the toes is all jacked up. Find me some toes. Find me some black women toes. Okay, don't get black women. Don't get black women. They're still with the white woman. Look at them toes. Go up, go up. Look at them toes. What the hell is that? All jacked up. Hammer toe. Hammer toe. <laughs> yeah. The toes is throwing up gang signs. Zephaniah said that thing. Look at that. Look at them boils and all that stuff on the feet. This is from uh, the spirit of being vain, trying to squeeze a large foot into a little Cinderella looking shoe. They watched that movie, the cartoon from a little girl, Cinderella. And a man runs around with a shoe this size, trying to find a woman whose foot fits in it. And from a little girl, her mind says, I want to get my foot in that shoe. So she practices squeezing her big elephant foot in that little shoe. Then her toes turn out like this. Look at this. Oh, then you got to, oh, that's sur surgery. Some women got to get surgery on the toe. 10 verse 4. And she took sandals upon her feet and put about her her bracelets and her chains and her rings and her earrings and all her ornaments and decked herself bravely 
to allure the eyes of all men that should see her. So Judith, this was, when y'all read this history, she had a plan because Holofernes was coming to destroy them. And the men were scared. Judith, and they said, we'll give ourselves up in three days. Judith said, don't do that. She said, I got a plan. She said, just bear with me. They said, what's your plan, Judith? She said, I can't tell you now. It's between me and the Lord. She said, but when I do this thing, you're going to hear about it. So her plan was to deck herself out beautifully. Judith 10, verse 18 and 19, read that. Then was there a concourse throughout all the camp, for her coming was noised among the tents, and they came about her. So they all surrounded her. They saw this beautiful Israelite woman. Go ahead. Go to 14. Jump Verse 14. 14. Now when the men heard her words and beheld her countenance, they wondered greatly at her beauty and said unto her. Jump back down to 18. 18. Then was there a concourse throughout all the camp, for her coming was noised among the tents. And they came about her as she stood without the tent of Herlophanes till they told him of her. And they wondered at her beauty and admired the children of Israel. They envied the children of Israel. Go ahead. Because of her. Because of her. Go ahead. And everyone said to his neighbor, who would despise this people that have among them such women? Surely it is not good that one man of them be left. Who being let go might deceive the whole earth. So you see, I see that they wanted to kill all the men because of the beauty of the women. They said what? Deceive the whole earth. They said they, because of their women, they might deceive the whole earth. Israelite women are the best looking women. Ain't That's that right, right, sisters? I don't hear nothing. See. They don't believe it. See? Yeah. Brothers, y'all got to help them with that low self-esteem. There you go. That's are y'all the most beautiful women in the world? They don't believe that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go to 2 Ezra 2. 2 Ezra chapter 2 and verse 28. The heathen shall envy thee. You hear what the scripture says? The heathen are going to envy you. Mm -hmm. You don't understand. I'm talking about the black woman first. Do you understand that the white woman wants to be you? Exactly. They want to be you? They don't believe it though. The, I? The, I it, no. the imagery you see they put out there on TV and in videos and print ad. It's to destroy the minds of people. They're communicating a message on what beauty is. But yet they will turn around and they will put injections in their lips. They will burn their skin. The sad thing is all women don't understand that the white women want to be you and you want to be them. We'll bleach your skin, they'll burn their skin. Why do we have that in our minds? Why do our women have that? Because they've departed from the words of God. If you would open a Bible and you would see how your foremother looked, you would follow this. And you know what? This book is a blueprint of what we're supposed to be like. So back to the point where we were saying earlier, Elder, about the, the woman with the shoes wearing size too small. They teach you that, that a woman with big feet, it's a shame. It looks bad, whatever. So you will shove your foot into a small shoe. Moab, pull up that, pull some of Moab. China's women with small feet. If you see what they do, they strap their feet down from young. So their feet can, can retard, it won't grow. So they can look, so you have a woman, she'll be daggone six foot with a size two shoe. We learn, we, env we envy our oppressor, we want to be like that. Look at that. That's what Moab do. And that's, that's, the, and that's the image of beauty. These hey, people are Some of these black women in here got, got their foot looking just like that. Look over there. Proverbs 31, verse 30. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31 and verse 30. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. So when it says favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, it says, but you know what? Because who you are is not just based on your looks. Who you are is if you have a, a, a godly man. And in having a godly mind in these scriptures, you're going to know how to carry yourself. You're going to know how to dress. You're going to know how to speak, how to conduct yourself. We learn the hardy woman. Where do we learn those things from? Found the other nations. Wasn't that the problem with Vashti? Hardy, big mouth. We mimic our enemies in all things. That's the reason why we behave. That's the reason why women dress the way they are. It says beauty is vain. It's vanity. Because we know that the fashionless world passes away. Why was Solomon said the same thing? Vanity is vanity. All is vanity. Why? Because he tried to learn the ways of the other nations. The way that God made us is perfect. We're made in his image. In his image. And in that, we are above all nations. He said, I give you, I choose you, and I give you honor, praise, and name above all people. So why would we regress for? Why would, you know, because I've heard sisters say before, well, show me the scripture a woman can't blind her hair. Why would you want to do that? 
The question is, why would you wrap your mind around the concept of wanting to do it? Abstain from all appearance of evil. Wouldn't you, you want to walk around looking like you got a cursed head? Sisters, we love y'all. We pray that we can uh, get our thoughts according to the Most High's word. And like I said, the standard of beauty is changing now, and it will definitely change when Christ returns. Ain't no, everybody, like remember during the, some of y'all too young, but during the 70s, white people was trying to get their hair Afro because that, they was following us. That was the style. Now we get Afro, oh, that's ugly. No, it ain't. That's, and that's a style right now. You see, I saw it on YouTube last week. White women actually getting Afros now. They're actually curling their hair, putting these rods in it, and they're getting Afros. They want to be you, and you want to be them. Right. Look at that. Easy Afro tutorials. Yeah, white girls are trying to do this. Let me tell you something. The, the Most High chose us above all nations of the earth, and he made us in his image. There's nothing wrong with us. We are the best thing on this earth. Exactly. The black woman is the best woman on this earth if she got me. And she keep quiet. She's <laughs> exactly. the best thing on the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people That's right. that are upon the face of the earth. Look at the word holy. Exalted or worthy of complete devotion, but the word divine, devoted, having divine qualities, okay, venerated, sacred. Y'all understand these? This is what the Most High is saying about us. Okay, so read it again. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. Has chosen thee. So if he chose this people, that means he rejected everybody else. See, that's the words I have to use, Elder. I have to use those because they still on this, this let's, let's be with white folks. The most I say, you ain't with white folks. You're not with the Edomites. You're not with the Chinese and the, and, and the East Indians and all that. The most I say, you are above all, and you have to carry yourself that way. Read that statement again. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. Just that part there, have chosen thee, have chosen thee. Meaning he chose you and he rejected everybody else. See, you have to have that in your mind. He rejected everybody else. Who's saying this? I can't hear you. He rejected everybody else, come on. To be a special people. And to be special, meaning everybody else is worth nothing. See, you got to marinate, let those individual words get in that head. Go ahead. Unto himself. Unto himself meaning only. Meaning everybody else is away from the Most High. He pulled the Israelites close to him. So why in the world would you have you looking, at, looking up to them to try to mimic their beauty? It's, it, it's, they're supposed to want to look like you. Here you up there trying to follow them. Give me that second Ezra 6. Verse 56. As for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing but be like unto spittle. So the other nations are like spit that comes out your mouth. That's what the Bible says. Go ahead. And has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. Who cares about a drop of water that falls out of a, a vessel? Do you worry about that one drop that falls out of your cup? No. Go ahead. And now, O oh Lord, behold, these heathen which have ever been reputed as nothing. What does the word reputed mean? Reputation. They've all the nations have always had a reputation as being nothing, but not today. As for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said Stop. that. Who's the thou? He said, Thou hast said. Who's the thou? So this is Ezra's telling the most. I said, God, Lord, you're the one that said that these people were nothing. That's the conversation. Do y'all get that? He says, you the one that said in your word that these people are nothing. You said that. Do y'all get it? That's what Ezra is saying to the Most High. He said, you said that these people are nothing. And you said that they have their reputation as garbage. You said that. So why are we underneath these nothings? That's the point. So he said that they've always been reputed as nothing. So why are our sisters getting hyena hair? Raccoon hair, baboon hair, and whatever other kind of hair, horse hair, and tying it in theirs to look like them. The mind has been turned upside down, brainwashed.
That's the truth. Television has brainwashed our women, our sisters, and our brothers. Because our brothers, some of us say, oh, you don't look good unless you got horse hair on your head. You're crazy. You have been brainwashed. Your mind is corrupt. Yeah, your mind has been tampered with. Read that again. Verse 57. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us. Right. They were always in reputation as being nothing. Spit. Garbage. Now we look at them like the hunks in the beauty of the earth. Mosai said, no, they've always been nothing. Now in us being born again, we got to start to open our eyes and see through the eyes of God that they are nothing. The eyes of God, I'm making reference to this Bible. See with this, see with these eyes, they are nothing. We all have to be born again, every man and woman in here, all of us. We've got to change our minds. Yes, Captain um, Isaac. I could bring out a scripture, elders, pertaining yeah. to the topic. Yes. Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 10. This is how the Most High wants us to look. All right? The Most High said, I clothed thee also with broidered work, and shod thee with badger skin, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands, and a chain on thy neck, and I put a jewel on thy forehead, and earrings in thy ears, and a beautiful crown upon thine head. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broidered work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou was exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom, and thy renown, that's the reputation, like Judith had, and thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty, for it was perfect, here's the point, through my comeliness, which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. So that having the, 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 the woolly hair like the elder brought out, that's how the Most High wants us to look. Because guess what? He looks like that. Like we read in Daniel, the, um, the seventh chapter. Exactly. Right. That was bad. <laughs> read, read that last verse, 14. <laughs> verse 14. And thou renowned went forth among the heathen, for thy beauty, for it was perfect through my comeliness. The Saul said, your beauty was perfect through my comeliness. The way I told you to dress, the way I told you to look through him. He said, I am the author of your fashion. He says, and it was renowned. That goes back to the book of Judah we was reading. Real quick, watch this. Go, go to uh, Deuteronomy 26. He said, through my comeliness, you were renowned. So the most I don't need people to be self-thinkers. He said, I do the thinking for you. Just do what I tell you to do. That's the problem. We always got ideas. And Lord don't, he ain't looking for ideas. He's looking for people to listen. Watch this. Deuteronomy Wait. chapter 26 and verse 18. And the Lord hath avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people. Avouch means to make an agreement with you. Read on. As he hath promised thee, and that thou shouldest keep all his commandments and to make thee high above all nations which he hath made in praise and in name and in honor. Stop. He said that he made us in praise, name, and honor. We got to walk in that posture that we are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. We're his chosen people. And we look to him to be the author, Christ, the author and finisher of all faith. How would you look? Do you understand what it means to be in name and praise? I'm going to tell you some so-called Amalek. Them women walk like that. They walk, they look down at everybody. If you ain't one of them, they look down. And they're not even the Jews. Right. We got to walk and look at them like they're, be they're beneath us. We're supposed to be the renowned. And what makes us renowned amongst the nation? They see that we don't partake in what they're doing. We can care less about them and their fashions and what they see. They wear the same old tied black suit all day, every single day. They don't care what you think. And they think they're walking. But it says, in what? In praise? In praise and in name and in honor. That's the same renown we just read. Read on. And that thou mayest be in holy people unto the Lord thy God as he hath spoken. As he has spoken. He's the one who's the author. So I'll tell you something. That scripture right there was bad. The most high gives us the blueprint. We just got to be able to open God's word. And the reason why we do the things, and we've come a long way since we, since we started this. As we delve into scriptures, we're learning. We keep on what? Mortifying, discipline ourselves, coming more 
to the mirror of what our forefathers did. And every year we're supposed to come closer and closer to being exactly how we were in ancient times because that's how God set it up. We've got to remove ourselves from what the world does. So sisters and brothers, all of us, in our lifestyles, how we live, we got to look for sisters to be what? Like these women. Women, you got to mirror yourself against this. That scripture right there was bad. I like that one. Yeah. This goes in accordance to what um, Isaac brought out in Ezekiel 16. It was in Psalm 13 and verse 3. Now, you read the first verses, it's going to get to what the Most High made and how beautiful it is. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13 and verse 3. With whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods. In his creation, the sun, the moon, the stars, go ahead. Let them know how much better the Lord of them is. Go ahead. For the first author of beauty hath created them. The most High is the author of beauty. He determines what beauty actually is. Not what the white man says. The Lord is the author of beauty. Not essence, not vogue, not jet. The Lord is the first author of what beauty is. So therefore, when made in his image, that's what beauty is. Pure wool is the first author of beauty. His hair. He made us, obviously he created himself, so he's the author of beauty. The description of God is pure wool hair. And his son's hair is wool. Right. He made his hair like that as well. And the angels. And us. So God said that the author of beauty comes from him, and his hair was like the pure wool. What did we just watch on the screen? The man said he can't get 10 cents for woolly hair. But what God called the, the disease, leprosy, that cost the most. The scripture said that, that surely you're turning of things upside down. Because it's upside down. And your head is upside down. A lot of our people's heads is upside down. Their brain is upside down. Running after some blonde hair. You're sick as hell. Like I said, you're sick as you can be. Right. Um, Isaac, um, re go to Proverbs 23 and 7 for me. Y you know what? A lot, of, a, lot of t a lot of the times the problems, you know, it, it fall on you men. Because if you brothers as men do what you are supposed to do and, and mold your, your wife right, you understand? She going to come out of that. You know, but it's, it's all on you, man. You know, when your wife, your wife, she, she might come in the truth with you wearing weave and, all, and the wigs and all of that. And that's what you like. You understand? But if you let her know, listen, I don't like that. You know, and in time you try to get her up out of it, she going to come up out of it. But if you love that and you love the world, you ain't going to try to correct it. You understand? But read that, read that, Isaac. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Because guess what? As he thinketh is in, in his heart, the scripture said, so is he. All right? The sisters, we, get, we as men got to understand our, our woman been destroyed. You understand? The way how our, how our women think in their heart is to love Esau. They have been conditioned and been programmed to love Esau, want to wanna look like Esau. They want to think like Esau. They want to marry Esau. They been, our women been destroyed. So we as men, though, we got we to gotta help them to be born again in their mind, not just in them keeping, um, putting on fringes on the border of blue, but yeah. also in them changing the way how they used to carry themselves in the world. Yeah. Yeah. All right? Also in them changing their inner, their, their inner person. Go to um, Ecclesiasticus 19 and 29. But it all fall back on, on you men, yo. That's why the most I always come to the men when, when things is out of order. You don't go to the woman because we, we as men, we got the power and authority to fix, to fix the sisters. But if you got a wife and she in the truth, how much years and she in, she still, we put wearing certain things and you ain't try to build up her confidence, her self-esteem for she to come up out of that. You as a man, something wrong with you. You still love the world. Yeah, read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 19 and verse 29. A man may be known by his look. This is, it says a man may be known by his look, but it's also talking about a woman also. So you could tell somebody by the way they look. You see a sister walking along with, with, with um, blonde hair. The first thing that runs through my mind when I see that, that sister destroyed. Read that again. A man may be known by his look. Read on. And one that hath understanding by his countenance. And one that hath understanding by his countenance. Sisters inside it, where are you also? You're supposed to be that second line. You're supposed to look like you all have understanding. You understand? You're, it's supposed to be that, listen, you're supposed to 
have the knowledge by now that these chemicals going to destroy you. <laughs> if you, you've been with us so long and we have been teaching you all these things and you all ain't get it by now that you're going to be destroyed. When I say um, through these chemicals, you're going to get sick and all of that. If you all ain't realize that by now and you all don't put forth that continence of understanding by, by the way you dress, the way you look, when people see you, they must be like, yo, that's an Israelite sister right there. You know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be like, it shouldn't be, you know, they like, I don't know, she Muslim, she, I don't know, she, you know, you must, they must be able to watch at you and say, yes, this is an Israelite, this, that's an Israelite sister right there, by the way you, by the way you look. All right, so the scripture said we must be born again, you understand, you sisters got to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and you brothers too, you all got to build up your wife confidence and self-esteem to, for them to come up out of that state where they want to where to weave and want to blonde their hair and all of that crap. Because right? what, what the yeah. deacon said, well, just one, one before I forget, what the deacon said was absolutely correct, especially the part that he made about when he sees a sister with blonde hair, it represents total destruction. You said something like that, right? A, a pure messed up situation. I'm going to give you a quick example of what he meant because as soon as he said that, my mind went to something that I saw yesterday. Elder, you can attest to this. We were watching that video. What was it? The, the uh, Hidden Colors 3. And there's a section in there where the black woman was speaking and she was talking about black problems. And she had blonde hair. And once I saw that, I couldn't regard nothing that she said. I said, there's nothing that's coming out of this woman's mouth that's going to make any sense to me. <laughs> nothing. I ain't, her, the whole, her whole section went blank in my mind. I'm going to say it real quick. I'm a, we could move on, Elder. You see what happened with our society today? A lot of the black women, young black women are having children. I came up in a generation where the mother, every day, you know, would comb my daughter's hair for school every day. She would take time. This black woman today, they lazy as hell. They don't watch to their homes. They'll put that braid in their hair, that weave, and leave it for six months. They don't never take it out. Oh, they all, that's they do for six months doing that crap. They don't take care of themselves. They can't cook, they don't take care of their hair, and their daughters learn that, it's a cycle. It's a cycle. That's that, putting that weed, putting that, that permanent head, I'm talking about the perm, uh, the permanent head, because, you know, it's damaging. It's because it's easy, accessible to work. You know why? Because you're lazy. You're lazy. You took the time. You the young girls used to sit on the porch, and their mama used to braid their hair, their older sister braid their hair, and every day they went to school with their hair braided. These girls, these women don't do it. But that's all because of what? Goes back to this. If they read Proverbs 31, they would know how to order themselves a right. And if we understood what we wanted our women, we would command that in our household. They've been looking at it in a wider picture, right? Look how much money we spend to the other nations. Nine, nine, what is what? Nine billion dollars. Sisters, it's time to wake up now. Stop giving your money to the other nations. Then this, this week, we in different spirit, man. And the sisters, that's why they don't understand. Right, Lava. So the human hair is offered to idols. Yep. The synthetic hair, because some of them go, oh, I guess a synthetic wig. That's raccoon hair, yep. hyena, and horse. Now you want, woman, you want to know why your woman got spirits on her. Why she act crazy as hell? She acted like a damn raccoon. <laughs> Very important for you, brothers. So uh, some of you brothers who have wives, and it's hard for you to get your wife to come to the school. Now we're at the next level, because now we got them coming to the school. Some of you were fighting with your wife to get out of the tight pants, the spandex. Now you got them to that point. Now we're at the next point. Let's get that head together. Let them see the beauty within, according to the scriptures. First Timothy 3, go ahead. First Timothy 3, verse 5. For if a man know not how to rule his own house. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? So that's letting you brothers know. The Most High is letting you men know. It all goes back to you. If you cannot rule your house, get this woman in order. You are not fit for the kingdom. You are a mamby pamby. Yellow makes me sad, brother. I don't care how much muscles you got. I've seen a brother. Most brothers they with the biggest muscles be the weakest men when it comes to their woman. I don't know what to say. To her. Somebody help me. With all those muscles. Now you go to the gym for. What the hell is this? Then on the street, bad. He bad on the street. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the wife is kicking him upside the head. Shut up, sit down. 
I'm going to wear what I want to wear, do what I want to do. Read it again, Captain. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Right. How can you take, check, take care of the church of God? How can you rule God's people? He's, trying, he's setting up 144,000. And prior to that, the schools are being set up and established from city to city, state to state. How can you men even think to be over these things if your wife is crazy as hell? The first line in this truth, in your standpoint, is going to be that woman. If you can't deal with her, you cannot deal with this. You can't. You're not ready yet. Just say you're weak. Yellow makes me sad. Mamby pamby. Here's the next thing. You ever see brothers with the horseshoe? They call it the horseshoe. You know that look? Where there's no hair. They, give me that scripture. Leviticus. Leviticus 13 and verse 40, 40 to 41. And the man whose hair has fallen off his head, he is bald, yet is he clean. So, if, brothers, if your hair falls off your head naturally, you're clean. Go ahead. And he that hath his hair fallen off from the part of his head toward his face. That means that part right there on the top of your head. Go ahead. He is forehead bald. He is forehead bald. Yet is he clean. So now, you home and your woman is telling you that's not sexy. Shave your hair off around the side. That's what she's telling you. Now, there's a law on that. Give me that. Leviticus 21 and 5. Because society tells you to have that forehead ball look or that horseshoe look, it makes you look like grandpa. You look old. So the woman has convinced you to shave your hair ball now. That's what the scriptures say. Leviticus 21 verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in, the, in their flesh. So now you have a choice. You're either going to do what the Most High says or listen to your woman who says she wants you to look like you used to look 20 years ago when you had a head full of hair. But guess what? Up and when you get older, some of y'all lost your hair at four years old and it never grew back. Some of y'all, it starts coming out later on. But it is what it is. That's how you look. That's your hair. The more Bible says you're clean, abide in the scriptures. Don't abide in what this woman says, who's telling you she's looking at the rap videos. Why don't you look like that? There you go. Bald your head. Looking at the basket of ballers. Look, ball your head like that. No. Don't do that. Do not follow this woman. Yeah, and that's, that's another way. Um, that's another, another way where, where brothers be having that low self-esteem. You understand? You start losing your hair. But the thing, I remember when, like, a year, two years after I came on the truth, I started losing my hair a little. I'm like, damn. I went to the elder, like, I'm losing my hair. He said, he said, you married, right? He said, your wife don't mind, so what are you worrying about it for? <laughs> you know, i like, you know what? You're right. You know, I, I, just, I just had to live with it. Yeah? You understand? Because the first thing, Ella, the first thing we'll be running through brother's head is this. I wonder if I use some Rogaine. But guess what? <laughs> Rogaine ain't no different from the perm and all of that crap. You understand? So you brothers are thinking you're going to use Rogaine and all of that to try to get you all here back. Yo, you're destroy, you're destro going to be destroying yourself just like the sisters. You understand? Going to go to the doctor. Uh, I'm trying to get some here on top here, you know. They got, they got a new procedure. I saw it on the news like, like a month ago where they, they make it look like you got here here by putting tattoos in your head you understand and they make it real low and it look like you got like you got here there all of that is is, is wickedness right they got yeah. a procedure where they shave the hair off your behind and sew it on your head you so you got pubic hair all up on your head what's that smell what the hell is this <laughs> yo hey listen brothers brothers with the bald head we just gotta let them know that most most of the great great prophets was was bald you know <laughs> yeah. uh, hey some of them was some of them was. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC 
will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube channels. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.